again to the Greater Grand Fair. Welcome, welcome to the Entertainers Competition of the Greater Grand Fair 1170. Now, I will say again what I have said every competition I've been at since they stitched me up. Obviously, the dragon got fed up of me winning this thing and won't let me compete anymore. So, I'm going to live vicariously through those that can. Now, it's also a good thing because it means someone else might win. On top of that, on top of that, the winner of the gathering competition, Granny Amanita, current <laughs> best bard in Agraya, is a judge. So she's not allowed to enter either. Moira Gray, who is one of the best wordsmiths that we have, she's not allowed to enter because she's a judge. And to keep things nice and impartial, we've enlisted the militia. So the third judge on our panel is Spark Stardust of the militia. Hey. Now, I also need to tell you I've had word from Almost Famous They've not had time to prepare anything, so they're probably not going to be here. And the Throsbards are currently in Throsgard sorting out some home problems, so they can't be here. It's wide open. I'm very excited to see new and interesting talents. Now, yeah, I don't know. No. I think it's a plumbing problem. So, so I will welcome you again to this competition. I will say that it's especially nice this year because I get to have Tal Rasha, my other master of the Bard's Guild with us here. He's going to be quiet because I've told him to be. Because otherwise that would be less time of me talking. Right? So, Without further ado, I'm going to call to the stage Master Taglio, our master entertainer, to take over the competition. Before I do that though, and this is further ado, I know, I know, I realised it as I said it. If, for any reason, you don't want to appear in our imp in a box presentation of this, please let us know and we will make sure that it's not on for that portion of the thing. Okay, so Taglio, where are you? I'm over here, Master. God dear, I used to be a scout. <laughs> <laughs> My lords and ladies of the Heartland Nations, Yay! welcome to the great Australian Fair 1117 Entertainers Competition! Yay! I love this stage. We are running slightly behind, so I shall call very quickly to the stage our first act, a musical performance by the Amothians. Tabitha standing strong Looking at the other factions there Looking at her own Right in the middle where the leaders meet Verbal sparring starting even as they greet I've got heavy armor said One for the chap It's super super shiny headed It won't crack Another leader piped up I've got 300 men So come on unicorns You better surrender then Stuff your heavy armor on a unicorn. Stuff your heavy armor, we've got wizards and guns. Oi! Stuff your three and weapons on a unicorn. If you mess with me, I've got wizards and guns. They said we don't believe you. She said it's blooming true. And Mothians have been wizards since at least 1102. I don't need no pole arms doing all that crush. Not when we've got gone, ready to grab you in a bush. We've got no gold or magical swords, but super wibbly wisdom. Well, we've got hordes. The other leads all laughing, looking mighty. 
he pleased Until the wizards wander up and bolt them in the knees Stuff your heavy armor, I'm a unicorn Stuff your heavy armor, we've got wizards and guards Stuff your food and men, cause I'm a unicorn If you mess with us, we've got wizards and guards Of course, ladies and gentlemen, what you're wondering right now is Who on earth is this guard? Well, can I introduce to join us right now the war leader, the field marshal of the Unicorn Nation, Gar! Looks a bit like Hamish, but way more pale. The wizards are spell happy as the first row drops. And then one of the mockers, up to Tabitha, he crawls. Will you be my lord? She says, I will, of course. Would you rather be wizards? Or Richard into gone? Stop your heavy armor, I'm a unicorn. Stop your heavy armor. I'm a unicorn If you mess with us We've got wizards Wizards and guns Thank you, Mike. Right, let's go to the bedrooms. Well, what a start! Great to love you! Woo! That was a bit good! Moving swiftly along, the man with places to be, and one of them's on the stage right now, calling to the stage the wonderful, the amazing, the extravagant, he looks good in any hat, Dickie! Hey! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have prepared a little song for you. I hope you like it. At first I was afraid I was petrified That's a little stage fright. Very well. If he's brave enough after that, I would like now to come forward to the stage the one, the only, the very simply named Hulk. Hey! I was intimidating the first act, the second one not so much. Holy day, holy day, I'm the first one of the year. Donald's wife came into church, the gospel for to hear. When the meeting it was done, she passed her eyes about. There she saw little Matty Groves walking in the crowd. Home with me, little Matty Groves, come home with me tonight. Come home with me, little Matty Groves, and sleep with me till light. Oh, I can't come home, I won't come home and sleep with you tonight. 
By the rings on your fingers, I can tell you are Lord Donald's wife. What if I am Lord Donald's wife? So Donald's not at home. But he is out in the far corn fields, bringing the yearlings home. The servant who was standing by on hearing what was said, he swore Lord Donald he would know before the sun set. And in his hurry, carried the news he bent his breast and ran. And when he came to the broad mill stream, he took off his shoes and swam. Little Matty rose, he lay down and took a little sleep. When he awoke, Lord Donald was standing at his feet, saying, How do you like my feather bed, and how do you like my sheets? How do you like my lady, who lies in your arms asleep? Oh, well, I like your feather bed, and well, I like your sheets. But better I like your lady gay, who lies in my arms asleep. Get up, get up, Lord Donald cried, get up as quick as you can. We'll never be said in fair Albion, I slew a naked man. Oh, I can't get up, I won't get up, I can't get up for my life. For you have two long beaten swords, and I not a pocket knife. It's true, I have two beaten swords, and they cut me deep in the past. But you shall have the better of them, and I shall have the worse. You should strike the very first blow and strike it like a man. For I will strike the very next blow and I'll kill you if I can. Matty struck the very first blow and he hurt Lord Donald's sword. But Donald struck the very next blow and Matty struck no more. Then Lord Donald took his wife, he sat her on his knee, saying, Who do you like the best of us? Matty goes on me, and then up spoke his own dear wife, never heard to speak so free. I'd rather a kiss from dead Matty's lips than you or your fine wreath. Then Lord Donald, he jumped up, loudly he did fall. He struck his wife right through the heart and pinned her against the wall. A brave, a brave Lord Donald cried to put these lovers in. To bury my lady at the top, for she was of noble head. Good stuff, Hob. Good stuff. Now I would like to invite to the stage Idun Bjornsdotter and the Fiera Family Players. We will tell you a story today. We need a start. First, we just have a small piece of audience participation that we need to borrow from one of you fine people, a star, preferably a simple wooden star. A spirit, ah, oh, thank you. Need a knob on the end. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the star. We will tell you a story, and we shall tell you a story about how Lukey made Eden and her apples get slightly kidnapped. Now, this story begins with an exploration. Loki and Herda and Tor is out in the mountains and looking for trouble. <laughs> And they've been looking for trouble for a long time. So they get slightly hungry. So they get to this valley where they see this amazing stag. And Tor throws his hammer and they have dinner. So what happens during dinner? Well, Loki, he set up the, the fire pit and the fire pit doesn't actually cook the meat. 
for some reason it isn't cooking. And they try again, they set up another fire pit. It's not cooking, it's not cooking, it's not cooking. It's getting a bit frustrating, but they hear a whooshing sound. <laughs> I will tell you why your meat is not cooking. I have cast a spell on it. <laughs> But I will release that spell and allow you to have your dinner on one condition. Simply promise when the meat is cooked that you will share it with me. What do you say, Loki? Okay. So. That time, in that fire pit, the meat actually gets cooked. And they start eating, and when they have all the meat in front of them, and should take the first bite. <laughs> ha! Oh, the deer, please take it! Loki because Loki got so angry for not getting the food and he swoops and he flies and Loki gets stuck in his spear you see he can't get loose and the eagle flies over treetops and gravel and poor Loki gets all bloodstained and really quite painful so Loki what to do about this? Help! Oh, Loki, Loki. I will put you down on one condition. Simply promise to bring to me a doom and her magical apples. <laughs> what do you say, Loki? Will you do this thing for me, or will you have a long, fast way home to the ground? What do you say, Loki? Yes. Make your decision. Yes! <laughs> there you go, Loki. Nice and safe. See you soon. And when Loki goes back to the campfire, he's suddenly not entirely hungry. And he's very quiet about his adventures. That was a silly thing that happened. That I, 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 nothing happened. It's fine. Let's go home to Asgard. Everything is fine. So Loki and Thor and Herder, they go back to Asgard. They find that everything is quite as usual. And um, then. Loki sneaks away to talk to Eden. Oh, hello, Loki. What do you want? What do you mean you're feeling old? You don't look old to me. So you feel tired. I feel tired. Pardon? You seem to have lost your voice as well. Well, have one of my apples. This will make you feel good again. Eat it properly. What do you think? Aren't they beautiful? Shout for the They're not as good as the apples that I found in the wood. What do you mean, the apples you found in the wood? You've got to shout. I don't believe it. There are no apples in the whole of a dreyer that are as magical as my golden apples. Let me see these apples that you talk of. Show me where they are.
Yeah. So Loki and Eden, they walk through the forest and they walk for quite a long time. And Eden is starting to get a bit suspicious because there isn't really any orchards around here and, and this uh, apple doesn't really grow around pine trees. How far do we have to go, Loki? And Loki? Loki, Loki says, over there on the hill, in that tree, Which tree? Where, where the big eagle is. That doesn't look like an apple tree. Hello, Edu. Loki, what have you done? Oh, oh no! Oh. <laughs> are taken away and this means that the, uh, the, the ancestors suddenly get very very old. They all walk around with a crick in their back and they are really quite irate and they realize that they would need Eden but she's not there so who saw her last? Who saw her last? Loki! Loki, do you know where Edun is? You saw her last, didn't you? Um, we need you to get her for us. We need you to get her for us. Do you need anything in order to get her for us? Oh, we need to ask Freya about her falcon cloak. Freya is not very fond of Loki. But then again, for this time, let's do it. Let's give you the falcon cloak. And Loki flies. He flies to the home of Charles. Kirsty, the giant, and in the tower of Kirsty is Eden. I'll take you back. You're the one that got me into this mess. I'll take you back. Well, I don't want to go with you. You'll have to magic me into a nut. <laughs> and suddenly, what is this? It is an Eden nut! And the falchion takes off! And not eating the nut! <laughs> he takes off with Eden in his claws. And when Thiasi comes home, he finds a feather on the ground. And he realizes what happened and starts a merry bird chase. And you see, before Loki went from Moscow, he asked the ancestor if they could prepare a fire by the wall of Moscow. And when he said his gave his sign, they would start this this fire. And Thiasi is chasing, and Loki is just slightly quicker. <laughs> Because Yas is getting slightly preoccupied. <laughs> but they are not quite with the Yasu wall. No, and the big eagle can take a bit of sword. He's almost taking the tail feathers of Loki. But then you see the wall in the distance. And the ancestors sees the falcon and the eagle and realizes it's time to start the fire. Loki flies straight through just before the fire starts and then it burns Thiasi. And when Thiasi is on the ground, dazed, confused and featherless, and him. Thor comes with his great weapons and ends him. Their are
Gospels, N.D. Doon, back. The Doon always comes back. He the essence. Always yeah. comes back. Yeah, I did well. Thank you, Jill. How Entertaining and educational. Hey. Next, I would like to invite to the stage Noren. Hey. I'm going to sing a song. It's not by me, but by someone that's way better at writing songs Noren. than me. who were actually on their break and joined the competition to now stand guard. If we could have your attention again, please. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can have your attention, please. What? Thank you. Wow, it's nice to have Cajun back, isn't it? Right, so. We're gonna crack on, because you know, these acts do not stop us. Some might say we're stupid, I don't believe so. I just call it stubborn, persistent, brilliant, and uh, what's another word for it? Amazing. Enduring. Amazing, <laughs> infuriating, yeah, that thing. So, we're gonna start this again. Was someone mid-performance? Naren was about to start her song. In so that case, to rejoin us on the stage. Give her a nice big round.
shield conclude he's horribly rude as he sure as hell not writing back cause the ship's going down all on account of the weather and though we'll drown there's no need to frown as we're all going together and i won't say low is me as i disappear into the sea cause i in good company as we're all going together as i'm sinking down into the brine a curious sight caught my eye Seaman shaft had found him, a raft and was making a speedy goodbye At the risk of sounding absurd, I have always been good as my word So a fish stank, I lodged into his eye and I knocked his ass overboard Cause the ship's going down, all on account of the weather As I disappear into the sea Cause I'm in good company As we're all going together No, I won't say woe is me As I disappear into the sea Ah, oh, hell You've all been so good to me And we're all going together Well, how about that? Amazing voice there. Enchanting, enthralling, incredible. <laughs> how do we follow that, you say? How could we possibly follow that? I think there is only one man in the room that could follow that. His name's already been shouted once, once someone up here. Cajun Spine Splitter, the one and only, if you can make your way to the stage, please. Yeah. I don't even need an introduction really, I could have just said your name and you're not to cheer. I'm not sure about that. I don't know, get on with it. <laughs> Cheers everyone. Right, so I have debated what to play and I've decided I was going to do like serious deep serious do me number and then someone tried to drop poison so I've changed my mind. Um, so, some of you will have heard this before. Okay, good enough. Uh, so if you haven't, but the first thing before I start, I need to ask a few questions. Well, one really. Put your hand up if you were raised in the countryside. Oh, yeah. oh that's me. <laughs> okay, right. All of you, I'm afraid this song's going to be wasted on you. Because you already know, you already know the threat of which I will be speaking. The rest of you, the rest of you, listen hard, right? <laughs> It's rational, remember. It's rational. Yeah? <laughs> if you're walking in the woods, you better watch your back. There are bear in the trees. The waiting to attack. Beady eyes follow you. They're watching what you do. Needle claws spring loaded. And bushy tails, <laughs> erect and bloated. It's a creature like no other. I tell your brother, it's a fiend. Grasping fingers, bright red haunches. He's got cheek paunches, he's a fiend. And you dare not speak its name. Probably what? Talking of fucking poison. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. The 
See, this is why I asked, because you city folk thought that was amusing. Not amusing. Serious business girls. I know that you think they're safe. But that's because you've never seen a battle hardened swiddle pack. Rain like arrows from the trees. <laughs> because the small, you think they're easy. We'll make you queasy <laughs> And up above Is yet more woe Walnut slingshots Ready to go Cause it's a creature Like no other I tell you brother it's a fiend Grasping fingers Bright red haunches Got cheek paunches is a fiend And you dare not speak its name Coming through. Look out, Fred, there's four on you. Grasping hands go for the eyes. They're terrified, we're paralyzed. There's cunning rodents. Train for war, we can't get through. We must withdraw. Squirrels, squirrels, squirrels. It's a feature like no other. I tell your brother, it's a free. Grasping fingers, bright red haunches, dodging haunches, he's a fiend. Squirrels! Squirrels! It's a shot like no other. I tell your brother, it's a fiend. Grasping fingers, bright red haunches, dodging haunches, he's a fiend. And you tell A wonderful Cajun spine splitter, everybody. Speaking of wonderful, a lady whose songs we all enjoy, who performs regularly on this stage and in any camp she happens to be in. I kept walking into her last night. I'd like to welcome to the stage, Sina. Hey! I enjoyed it. <laughs> After all, people will talk. Especially when I start the rumours. <laughs> this isn't a new one, because I haven't written a new one. So you're just going to have to make do with an old one. Funny how the little things make the bigger picture shine. Funny how my heart could ah, ah, funny how a smile can make your heart race full of time. Funny how my soul yearns for things that I've never seen before, like the way you look at me. And suddenly my heart is racing much faster. Suddenly my feet can climb many hills. Suddenly it seems the weight has been lifted from these tired shoulders when you're here with me. Once upon a time I thought I would always be alone and I was quite content with the quiet solitude I'd known. But then you burst into my life, bringing energy and joy And I'm never going back Cause suddenly my heart is racing much faster Suddenly my feet can climb many hills Suddenly it seems the weight has been lifted 
from these tired shoulders when you're here with me. Now adventure waits for me at the dawning of each day. And the joy of life is broad will remain even if you go away. For I've learned the thought code more than I ever could have known. And I can't wait to explore. Cause suddenly my heart is racing much faster. Suddenly my feet can climb many hills. Suddenly it seems the weight has been lifted from the tired shoulders and suddenly my heart is racing much faster suddenly my feet can climb many hills suddenly it seems the weight has been lifted from these tired shoulders when you're here with me when you're here with When you're here with me That was Sign of Everybody A lovely song Very, very well sung as well Giving the judges to uh, make a few decisions over there. Now a call out, a call out now. It's another act to come to the stage. We're almost at the halfway point where we'll stop, get a few more drinks in. Amaretto Sowers! <laughs> Welcome Amaretto. Thrill everyone. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and genders of a fluid nature, my name is Amaretto Sowers. A pleasure. Hooray! Today for you, I have a song that I borrowed. It is a song of a local legend in my hometown of Leinster. It goes a little something like this. Your shadow crept without a sound. Your deeds and story got around But we won't hear them anymore The dragons could write strong and true You did just what you had to do Your body blaved in blood and gore A promise made to end the tale of Steinwolf a vow that seldom mothers took First to fight and last to fall in battle <coughs> He was the wolf out of Leinster Our wolf out of Leinster We'll follow in your footsteps Fight with every breath that we've left for the wolf out of Leinster The wolf out of Leinster And when for more he came to war He did one and what none had dared before A poison blade in his hand And when the black caps crossed our wards He was there with knives and swords it was the corruption he could not stand No fear of death from the wrath of Baelor No fear assassins in the night Yet deep within the forest of Kappa We lost the wolf out of Leinster Our wolf out of Leinster who we'll follow in your footsteps Keep on fighting till our last breath 
for the wolf out of limestone. The wolf out of limestone. The wolf out of limestone. A promise made to end the tale of Steinwolf. A vow that seldom mothers took First to fight and last to fall in battle He was the wolf out of Leinster A wolf out of Leinster Will follow in your footsteps Keep fighting till our last breath for the wolf out of Leinster will follow in your footsteps. Keep a fighting till our last breath. For the wolf out of Leinster, the wolf out of Leinster, the wolf out of Leinster. The wolf out of Leinster. Thank you, Amoreso Samus. That was that was truly moving. Calling up next to the stage, please. The musical stylings of the very talented young man we call Ben. can't even think about doing. I get afraid of strings, it's really, really weird. <laughs> now, bringing us to the halfway measure before the judges can top up their drinks. Please welcome to the stage another wonderful man with a talent he only ever seems to display in front of us. Art. Yeah, this is one off. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Philip, look at this. Take someone else in. Take someone else in. Tell, joke, I'll tell my mum all these jokes. <laughs> no, no, not the woman. Okay. Darius. Oh, okay. Okay, apparently I've been promoted to Philip. No, the promoted to performing now instead of later. Oh, I understand. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've had many, many, many stars of entertainment from, act from acting to singing. Of quite a couple of string instruments, but I digress. But I gave myself a bit of an interesting challenge with this uh, wonderful opportunity. What if I would be able to write a story in one day? No rehearsal, no practice whatsoever. Something that would excite, something to teach, something to perhaps Spread so that others, so, uh, uh, others may have something to muse upon as they uh, as the day goes long. And so, I tell you, the, I tell you this tale. There was once a man, no man, barely a man, a boy, who once lived. He lived as it, uh, as often uh, as often as young as, as as young men do, broad of shoulder and blonde of hair. He dreamed. He was a dreamer, and he dreamed of glory, adventure fame and love. See, and so it was. Barely 
16 summers of age, he would set out, he decided to set out with few coins that he had earned. He, he brought his first sword, strapped it upon his back, girded his loins, so to speak, and set off. But, as he crested the first hill, he fought back to the family that he was leaving behind. The mother widowed when he was barely 10 summers old. The siblings that were young and needed one of, of his strength, one of his courage to continue. And even though it burned him in himself, burned his heart to spurn that which he truly desired, he turned and he returned it with heavy heart to the homestead. Many years would pass, many long years, and that, yeah, and, that young, and that young man would grow. His wit refined by many years of, to, of toil. His strength grown further. His wisdom brought, brought, brought higher. He would find that his mother would find love again and would be married once more. His siblings, enriched by the toil the which, he, which he brought under, the, the great hard bounty of labour that he brought to that which he truly cared about, they prospered. Their paths, their journeys, so, so, made safe and stable by his hands. And so, with many, year, many, many years later than he'd originally planned, because after all, what, so, so what, what plan ever, ever lasts longer than, longer than five minutes in contact with any real adversary? He, pre he prepares himself once again. This time though, with the wisdom and the time that he has taken, he is able to strap on a suit of chain, gathered from meagre coins scrimped from, so scrimped from what little jobs he could have. His duties done, he would adventure, for glory, adventure, fame and love and glory and glory especially the glory because who like who, who who doesn't like glory so he would so he would adventure for a for, so, so adventure battling brigands and monsters alone or with friends always seeking always seeking out the most daunting of tasks fighting for fighting for what he yearned for what he breathed living that dream that he had all within his breast. And then of course, as all paths travel, he travelled home. And there, once again, the shackles of burden and duty would await him. For the night, for, for, the, for the week before he left, there was a childhood friend who, upon learning of his late departure, finally struck up, so it struck up his, her, so her, her, her desire for him. And so, so, and, and so they had discovered that desire together over a night, over two nights, over another night, and another night just for good measure. Who knows? So, who knows? The time just flies by when you're having fun, isn't it? But he had learned that whilst he was away, he had bought, she had borne him a daughter. And worse still, that she gave her life of that daughter. Saddened, but again with duty, duty being at his core, at his heart, at the core of his very being, he put aside the sword, he lay, raised it and placed it above his fireplace. He took his chain and put it in a chest under his bed and he set about his duty once more. And so he found himself once again a living a life without glory, adventure, fame and love. But he saw his daughter, his daughter grow. And as his blonde hair faded to grey, his great muscles fade and wither. His wit grow dull and his sight dim with age. He saw his daughter go into bloom and he also saw in her the same fire that raged within his breast once upon a time. He could have been capricious, after all, we are all flawed in some way. Well, maybe not as fay, but it's, it, that's open to debate, of course. But, again, he chose to nurture that flame, nurture that fire, nurture that very essence 
that made him him, the gift that he had given his very daughter. And so, he gave, he gave her everything that he had, his wisdom, his wit, his, mem his memories of fighting and to living, live, to living on the road that he sought, that road of glory, adventure, fame and love. He gave her his sword and, and that mail, a little rusty but still perfectly serviceable, and she would depart, even though he would be left with nothing. For after all, in the, in the intervening years, his, his mother had died. One sibling taken by illness, another by, let's say, by squabble of inheritance. And so the years would fade, and he would too. Fading, feeling at once that he had not lived his life. He had not lived the journey that he wished to walk. But then the daughter came home, and with her, with glory, adventure, fame, and love. After all, it would say it, it was the fame of the daughter and the fame of the man who trained her that came to his ears and all that wandered with him. The glory of what she achieved, the glory and the amazing deeds that she had done was his to share. What she had given was her, what he had given had been returned to him tenfold. And, uh, so, and, of, so, and, of, and of course, he found, so he found the love of a daughter who would again give up her dreams for the, for, for, for the father that raised her, that she, that, that, the fire that burned within her breast. You could have many morals of this story. You could say that the father is in fact life and the daughter is in fact the legacy that we live, live with this life after all. That we often have to wander many paths that we do not imagine ourselves that which we don't see directly. We can give that to what comes after. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. If your drinks are low, now is the time to fill them. Especially if you're the judges. Take a moment or two to let people, if they need a drink, or need to stretch their legs, or want a breath of air from outside the tent, time to do it. If you've got any woes or problems, do talk to Granny, she can solve them for you. I would like now to kick us off for the second part of this entertainer's competition to bring forward a rat who's getting an introduction. The wonderful, the amazing, the singularly talented, and I mean that in a very specific way, <laughs> Tail Swift. Yeah. Yeah. Swift, and I am a scather. Yeah. I'm a scather with big nose and big ears. Now, the thing about scathing is they often get mistaken for mice, but scathing are not mice. So we get called mice, but we're not. We're much more like rats. Now, there's a lot of fundamental difference between rats and scathing. Right? There's a few. Though obviously, rats are bigger than mice, and rats are usually more disease-prone than mice. But there's another difference between rats and mice that's really important which is that mice are what they call physically incontinent. Now that means that mice, if they need to go to the, to the loo, they need a wee, they just have, they can't stop themselves, they just have to do it there and then. And that's not true of rats and it's not true of scathing. We're what you call functionally incontinent. <laughs> we can hold it in, we just don't care. <laughs> in. In. Continent rat, incontinent rat. Everybody loves an incontinent rat. Join in if you like. Incontinent rat, incontinent rat. Everybody likes an incontinent rat. I like a poo at the start of the day. It feels like I'm flushing last night's failures away. <laughs> oh. I like a wee 
before I go to bed Else I get dreams of waterfalls stuck in my head Incontinent in caught in the rats Incontinent rats Everybody loves that incontinent rat oh. I like to poop when I'm sitting in a tree Woe betide any scout who comes scouting under me Are you scouts in the room? Now you can tell by the lack of the smell <laughs> I like a poop that comes out nice and clean we're running low on paper, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Incontinent rats, incontinent rats. Everybody loves an incontinent rat. Oh, I like to weep when I'm sitting in the bar. I hope that the stains are hidden behind my guitar. <laughs> I like a poo when I've had a good curry. You might see me running if I'm in a bit of a hurry. Incontinent rats, incontinent rats. Everybody loves an incontinent rat. Oh, I like a poo that's a proper power dump. The cubicle all shakes when it comes out of my rump. Oh, I like a poop that's proper diarrhea. It makes a funny noise when it comes out of my rear. <laughs> incontinent rats, incontinent rats. Everybody loves an incontinent rat. Oh, I like a week when the north wind doth blow, I like to go outside and write my name in the snow. I like a poo when I'm just sitting down, that's why all my trousers are stained dark brown. Incontinent rats, incontinent rats, everybody loves an incontinent rat. I like to weep on my friends when they're asleep. I know it sounds bad, but that's the company I keep. <laughs> incontinent rats, incontinent rats. Everybody loves an incontinent rat. Incontinent rats, incontinent rats. Everybody loves an I did say singularly talented <laughs> with meaning. If anyone's got any very large pieces of wood, some heavy steel springs, and a large piece of. Yeah, leave it out for them. Next up, please. I'm almost ashamed to do it to you, Gwen. <laughs> but you're next. Oh! Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to do a story out of my comfort zone because normally I tell stories when I'm on this stage, but you know, I, I thought I had to sing a song. And the reason is because uh, I've been listening to lots of bards singing and telling stories and talking about adventuring, and it's all about the young and the beautiful maiden and the young and handsome young man. And frankly, well, you know, getting on in years, kind of, we're not in girth a little bit. Some of us are hags. Exactly. <laughs> and I kind of feel that there's not a lot of love going out to, to, to our kind of people. So, um, I, I thought I'd write what I would call a pragmatic love story. So, uh, oh, I've told many tales and I've sung many songs of love so pure and rare. Of raggle taggle gypsies and flowers in golden hair. 
of unrequited lovers, dying maudlin romantic deaths. <laughs> and here's what I've come to realise. I really couldn't care less, <laughs> for I'm a woman of a certain age. Yes. A bard and a minstrel too, a healer as well, but it doesn't pay well. And here's what I'm saying to you. For love, it makes the world go round. Or so the great birds say. But frankly, it doesn't pay the bills. And egos get in the way, along with other things, may I point out, you know, when you get to a certain age. Oh, <laughs> oh love is great if you're young and fair and sweet of lemon face. But frankly, for the rest of us, it's a bit hard to join the race. It's a bit unfair, do you, you know, you know? Oh well. For I'm a woman of a certain age, a bard and a minstrel too, a healer as well, but it doesn't pay well. And here's what I'm saying to you. Oh, bards, they sing of immortal love, all in a minor key, <laughs> strumming of a minor. No call signed in here? No, that's good, okay. We know it's tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> of widows mourning mightily and why two now are dead why can't it all end happily and preferably in bed hey! Hey! Why, you know, why is it always so miserable for I'm a woman of a certain age a bard and a minstrel too a healer as well but it doesn't pay well and here's what I'm saying to you oh I've had my share of heartbreak of love and tragedy a noble, handsome paladin who shared his name with me. Oh. Oh. But someone should have taught him not to zig instead of zag. <laughs> and now I'm left broke and alone. And oh, what's the point in that? Oh, that's sadder, that's sadder. Oh. For I'm a woman of a certain age, a bard and a minstrel too. A healer as well, and it doesn't pay well, and here's what I'm saying to you. Oh, love is great when you are young, and you feel the passion's fire. At least let's hope that's all it is, but this healer is for hire. Hey! He told you you were sweet and fair. She told you you were strong. And in love's greatest cavalcade, how could this go wrong? I mean, really, how can it go wrong? Boy meets girl, boy goes out to war, girl goes out to war. What could girl possibly go wrong? <laughs> but I'm a woman of a certain age, a bard and a minstrel too, a healer as well, but it doesn't pay well, and here's what I'm saying to you. What happens when that passion fades? When the itch is a nasty rash? What will keep you safe and warm? I suggest you ask for cash. <laughs> for pragmatism is my religion. And here's what I advise. Look for a lover with capital and not wander lust in his eyes. For I'm a woman of a certain age, a bard and a minstrel too, a healer as well, but it doesn't pay well. And that's what I'm saying to you. I know where I'm going tonight. <laughs> After this contest, I've got plenty of it. <laughs> Giving the judges a chance to score. Next up, I would like to invite a pro at this. She's been here before. Pumpkin. Come to the stage.
introduction a man whose fingers are lightning on a guitar please come to the stage Rodrigo see I actually need assistance dressing. Thank you Fabian. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello, Rodrigo. Oh. unaccustomed as I am <laughs> to singing in public, I have been persuaded, much against my better judgment, to come and sing to you of many things. And I thought long and hard, and I thought, Shall I sing of love? Yay! No. no. And then I thought, shall I write a comic song about a master of the guild? And then I thought, no. Aww. And what I thought I would do instead is I would sing a song that tells you a little bit about my hopes and dreams. Ooh. This one's about me. <laughs> I know that's that's a bit self-indulgent. I'll get away with it. No, no. I would apologise to you, but they always tell performers never apologise. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it. And in fact, I'm going to sing a song that I'm going to stick a little introduction on, and the introduction is designed to describe to you a place that is peaceful and beautiful. Because on this egg, we could all do with a little bit more peace and beauty. And so, here's a little instrumental introduction going into the song, and then I'll sing to you about my hopes and dreams. Can you all hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, yes. No, no, no. You're supposed to say, no, Rodrigo, play louder. No, no Rodrigo, play louder. Yes. I can't play louder. This is beautiful. Thank you.
pass around a bottle and they sing Music makes me smile Give me wings and I will fly away today Give me wings and I will fly away Give me wings and I will fly away today As I walk towards them, I think about long lost friends, their faces and their voices are with me once again. Give me wings and I will fly away today. Wander slowly homeward She's brushing out her long black hair I'd like to walk towards her But I know there's no one there So give me wings and I will fly away to bed Like I said, a lightning across the guitar. One, the only Rodrigo. I would like now to introduce to you a man some of you may have seen perform, some of you may not. But he's a wonderful, soulful performer. And I'm sure he will impart some of that to us all right now as I call to the stage Simba. Soulful. Now there's a thought. Well, when I came over here, someone asked me to uh, to do a song. I had a little bit of a look through my book because I've got a, a fairly wide range. And then I saw the children, so I'm down to one. So do please forgive me. Um, I have noticed that people have been politely tapping along with the tune as they go. I would just like to say, I'm not here to win this. Um, it is written as a little bit of a table thumper, and if people want to be entertained, you know, that's probably good enough for me. Um, it is a song for uh, Lady Beastkin, if there happen to be any in there. And I'm not getting married until the gathering, so even better. There was a time when the land was wild We carry the memory deep inside When all that live for to be fulfilled The only law was kill or be killed The cities came, the roads were laid The change is spirit with the laws they made Let the flames burn high, the hunt begins Open up your heart, let the wild in. Let the chains fall away, let the prey be aware. Fill the heartbeat of the dragon in the warm night air. If ever was a time this was meant to be, throw back your head and roar. Let the beast run free. As the sunset fades, feel your heartbeat race, your hot blood pump in the night's embrace. Live for the moment that lies ahead, Took the finest of your passion till the world can fade. We were born for this, a beast inside, a dragon's fury and a lion's pride. If only for tonight there will be no sin, 
Open up your heart without the wilding. Let the chains fall away, let the prey beware. Fill the happy that the dryer in the warm dying air. There ever was a time this was meant to be. Throw back your head and roar, let the peace run free. In a forest, in a field, in a moonlit glade, find each other in the darkness till a spark is made. Tomorrow is only a breath away. Tonight will be the moment between night and day. This is our legacy, this is our creed. This is our salvation in our time of need. This is the gift that the night has been. Open up your heart, let the wild in. Let the chains fall away, let the prey be aware Feel the heartbeat of its fire in the one night air Never was a time this was meant to be Throw back your head and roar Let the beast run free Thank you, Simba. Now we have some guests with us, yes. who I've never heard of before. <laughs> we have, yeah, they're brilliant. So I don't know if they're any good, but I'm sure they will surprise us they've all. Got they've got to be right. <laughs> this is true. Have you learned nothing from the last few years? Goblins are the master class of the trial. <laughs> 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 So, welcoming to the stage, the fantastical, incredible, enthralling, enchanting, how much more do you need to get the work the instruments? Enticing. Enticing. Let's not go too far, yeah? Let's not go too far. Apparently, they are the greatest thing ever to walk a drain. Yes, of course we are. Is that better? I give to you Stinking Park when they're ready. Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's right. Give me a second. That's fine. Yeah. I'll entertain them. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah? <laughs> we got in a little bit of trouble recently in, a, in Mauritania when we did a song about the local lord about how his wife looked like a woodlouse in a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> Took so, we've written a song today called The Races of Adrea, because you're quite a diverse bunch of people, you, I've noticed. An A, darling. A, A. An A? Oh, okay. It's fine. No, it's not. You'll be okay. This is all part of the act. That sounds, that sounds fine. Whoa. So, what did you for?
Don't you stick your pocket or a drag from Northland to South Shore, you'll be a cop on the floor. Cause now I like egg in the game, look at how epic I am. Down in the gills when the goblin party comes in. Put our banners in the ground, you're under new management. Equip the finest threads, dragon, you don't kill them. Swing it like this, speed is when I'm beating these bars. You think your song is bad, I'm from tearing up on each other. But with a pretty high mage, cause now we is known. I grow inside with every word that I take And now my goal's kinda low She's so stealing your shiny stone Lyrics given with precision Here come the killing blows Well, the Faye on the X They do you think I'm pretty? Look over there I can see a butterfly And that's where they will be Arrogance of their community generally well respected And that's why, that's why they're fantastic and wonderful and brilliant And that's why everybody loves them Everybody loves them Break it
to the stage now. A lady, there's another veteran of these boards. You've been to many of these things now, haven't you? Please, welcome to the stage, the wonderful, the lovely Strawberry. Hey! Right, hello. Oh! Right. right, a lot of you have probably seen me before, but this is the first time for me and my guitar. Ah. So, Bear with me. Uh, it's also the first time I've written something myself. So. Yay! Yay! Well done. Now, what was the first words? Yeah. <laughs> oh. For me, really. Thank you, Strawberry. Absolutely wonderful. Now, is he in the room, Artie? Are you here? Get up here. Hey! You're late. If you don't get a cool introduction. You're late. I'm late. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Are you all having a good time? Yeah. Brilliant. I must apologise for my uh, amazing magic act earlier. I had to deal with some agenda issues about the minutes from last week. Call back to the goblins if anyone got that. Either way, I've been spending a little bit of time with the caravan for some time. Who has heard of the one wall caravan here? Here! Brilliant! Now, they've got a rather infectious personality. And this song is a little bit dedicated to them. And this is a bit of advice for all of you here once all of this has ended. <laughs> so, without further ado. 
Day in the dusk of night, especially when you're in the middle of a right. When you got the healers from a nearby fight, don't get just don't get stabbed uh, now. When you travel a mountain high with a single cart, exploring all the depths of the underdark, even if it's just for a freaking laugh, don't get just don't get stabbed now. When you're at alone, especially as a crow, <coughs> just to just to the market for the briefest while. You never know when there's gonna be another trial. Don't get, just don't get stabbed. Oh, you might think you're brave or immune to enough. Maybe got your mage to give you a bath. But <coughs> would you... I've lost it, sorry. But would you please heed my words? No matter where you're from, dragon hearts and lions, jackals and unicorns, griffins, bears and wolves, and the tarantulas The night is dark and dangerous You never know what's around Oh wait, I forgot the vipers Wait, just give me one moment Just wait for one second <coughs> Please don't stab It isn't that nice Please don't stab It really does hurt Please don't stab I know it's just a welcome from you vipers But uh, oh no Please don't stab We may drop our tea Or our scones Or is it our scones? Scones! Oh Scott! crap I can't really remember But please, just please Hear this advice now <laughs> Laying in the sun He don't placing from above Visiting cream teas for a little love Returning from strawberry picking just cause you had enough Don't get, just don't get stabbed Now under the shelter, hiding from the rain Drinking too much rum and needing to pee again Moving from battle cause your army needs a mend Don't get, just don't get stabbed A diplomatic mission with our nearby guests Laying in the fields for a cheeky rest Claiming a beast, calming a beast skin who's seeming a bit distressed don't get, just don't get stabbed, oh, you could have armour, maybe not feeling through, but what if there is ten and only one of you? Now, there are many dangers, some ranged, and there are some from up close. If you're looking shiny, you may be tired the most. <coughs> Remember, if you go out, if you're leaving your camp safety for a second or for an hour, just don't get cut or stabbed. Or bolted, or flint, or cold. Don't get fatal, and don't get diseased now, and don't get struck down, and now don't get repelled, and now don't get stabbed. So if you're around your campfire and everything seems fine, what must you do? So don't get stabbed. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Now, something a little bit different as we begin to round off the competition. I'd like to bring before you someone who will perform miracles before your eyes. I think he might be a wizard. Marwin the Marvellous! He's a warlock! Look at that! Ladies, gentlemen, patterns of all types. How are we this evening? <laughs> what was that? I couldn't hear you! <laughs> now, are we ready 
to be amazed, astounded, and other positive words beginning with A. Now, for my first trick, I want to break the mold a little. You may have seen other magicians. They like to pull things out of their hats. But it's always, always a rabbit. So, let's go for something a bit different, shall we? A tiny manatee. Hey! Now, let's see what I've got in my bag of tricks this evening. As soon as I can get it open. Okay. Now, a volunteer. Does anyone in the audience have a coin? I can promise. I can promise you'll get it back. Okay. Then who wants to test that one of mine is real? I will. Okay. It's a copper. Okay. I've got backups. Oh, wait. Really? I'll check that one as well. <laughs> I'll have the other one back first. Oh, Siri, that's got in my pocket. You know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. I can promise it will be returned. Will be a better one? Or maybe not. Thank you very much. Now, a real coin. Nothing illusory about it. Don't steal it. Don't eat it! Put it in your yeah, mouth! Yeah. Don't worry, it's big! No, it's alright. It's okay. Yeah, it's one real right. copper coin. Like now, there's a funny thing about money. No matter how safe you keep it, somehow it always manages to vanish. But don't worry, you can always get it back. <laughs> now, where are the rest of the pieces? While I'm looking for them, judges, please verify that this is an ordinary tube. There is nothing wrong with it. You can see straight through it. It does come apart. It. Okay. it will go back together. They broke the tube. Sorry, it's uh, me. Break a tube? I broke yeah, it. Yeah, okay. What about you? You're an expert. It's not sweet. It's not sweet. Oh. It's a tube. Yeah, it's proper. Okay. It's now a bit wet. Yeah. That's okay. I can deal with that. Now, I want you to watch how many of these small items I place in this tube. One. Two. And the white one last three. So why did only two come out? And I will allow the judges to check that that is not inside. Oh! Oh! He's at the bottom. He's at the bottom. He's in his end. He's in his end. It's not sweet. Thank you very much. And now, for my last trick, a bit of audience participation. Can I have a volunteer? That one. This one. Come on up. Now, feel free to check that this is an ordinary pack of cards. It's not all the same card or anything like that. Make sure he pays you for your services. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. That's all right. Yeah, with Booney's money, apparently. I've got it back. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, I'll shuffle them slightly. And now, pick a card. Any card. Okay, while I turn my back, show it to the audience so they all see what it is. Over here. Over here, pocket. 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 Pocket.
Don't show it to me. Now, another shuffle. Now, is this your card? No. Okay, Mr. Step, give it back, give it back. <laughs> Slight issues here. I'll shuffle it again. And just a little bit extra. Was this your card? Yes. seen anyone leave the stage to the chance of burn the witch. <laughs> I'm a kill on this, kill him! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, no! <laughs> you know you You get lynched by children, children. <laughs> you want no one to blame but yourself and Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, our final act of the evening. Oh, the wonderful Hazel. <laughs> Right, we're going to sit. Right. Goblin. Yeah, I'm a goblin, don't worry about me. We're going to sit on the floor. So if you want to come forward and like sit with us, that'll be great. Yeah, Just saying, if you want to, you could right now. Brilliant. Yeah. It's going well. Yeah. All right. We're all getting in. We're all getting in. That's all I've ever seen without using magic. <laughs> <laughs> right, this here is Hazel. Yeah. She's my buddy. She's 11 years old. She lives in Kimria at a place called Gateway Keep, which is pretty rubbish from what I hear. It's like full of mountains and volcanoes and monsters who want to eat you. And like people keep trying to kill you all the time. So they've got this song. Originally written by a famous dragon elven bard called Ed Sheeran. <laughs> there might be an apostrophe in there somewhere, I don't really know how you spell things. Is there an app? Is there a what? An app, Sheeran. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Right, we're going to sing anyway now. Are we good? Do you, need, do you need any words? I don't think you do, because you're awesome. I need this because I'm just a rubbish goblin. Alright, I'm an average goblin. He's a better goblin. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
the, the dragons in this um, gathering will know that we had a bard and we lost a bard last night whose name was the Watcher. And um, I have recently been blessed by the dragon, um, which enables me to teach people things. Um, so we decided that in honour of the Watcher, we were going to put together a special prize for someone who is the one to Watcher. A rising star. A rising star. Um, so there's no certificate because I ran out of paper. Um, but I've, I've seen this person perform before and I was amazed today. Um, Strawberry, I'm going to teach you something. Would you like to come Would up? Would you like to come up? Where are you? <laughs> Strawberry's gone off to do something with her young friends. Okay. She's so popular, she's not even here. Strawberry's mum, everyone! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, we also have a second special prize because Twig Spitter, the Grand Master of the Bard's Guild, is feeling exceptionally generous and he'd like to offer training to this next group, which is, of course, Stinking Park! I don't think they're why they're coming up. You need to go speak to Mr. Twixby. So, I don't know why we're standing so far. Um, so, third place goes to uh, a bard who we were all very impressed by who told us, um, informed us about something that doesn't often get spoken about. Um, so our third place goes to Gwen. incredible prize. The judges were unanimous in their choice for this. I'd like to welcome up our new master bard, our master entertainer, uh, Hazel! Yeah! Standing. 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 
Dog. No, I need it. I know, I know you need it. We swap sides. There we go. Oh, we good, we're good, right. I don't know where to put this. You're getting it, you're getting it. There you go, tied. Right. Give me that. Yes, oh. please. Well, so that.
famous competition for the Great Adrian Fair 1117. And I would like to remind everybody that every act that got up here took a lot of courage. This is very hard to do. It's very hard to stand up in front of so many people and put on a show, put on a performance, and keep your head together and keep your heart together. They all did it. Thanks for coming. You've been fantastic. One more time. Oh, I'm going to